go, 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 go. What, what's up, Miami? Lunch with Mizo, DJ here. I'm in a hidden bunker in Miami. And the screen behind me, I just want you to know it's not a green screen. It's actually green. I uh, wanted to start off my set uh, with an essay by John Berger. And um, if you listen to any of this set, uh, listen to this essay. Um, I listened to it this week, and the way that he, he reads this is um, maybe one of the most beautiful things that I've, I've ever heard. Um, and um, yeah, keep it unlocked. You're listening to MCR Radio. own special restrictions and prohibitions concerning roads, checkpoints, exits, and entrances. All the information on these identity cards was printed in Hebrew, and only the owner's name was written by hand in Arabic. date, birthplace, residence. Every card has a number, and today, when an Israeli soldier taps in this number on his army mobile telephone, he is informed of the person's past record. There is scarcely a family in Palestine who does not have at least one member who has been or is in an Israeli prison. Yet, despite the stored and coded information to which these identica identity cards, identity cards, identity cards, are the keys, they have nothing to do with identity. They are simply an inventory of stolen facts. True identity can be neither delivered on demand nor stored as mere information. And to believe that it can be is the weakness of all so-called security records kept by oppressors. True identity is something known in one heart and recognized within another. It always contains a secret that no interrogation can reveal. Its secret is its human beingness. And it involves both the personal and the collective. It offers a sense of belonging and a sense of distinction. The distinction being what distinguishes each one of us. A true identity implies continuity. It evokes ancestors and heirs, the dead and the as yet unborn. And at the same time, 
it frames a here and now, which is a me at every transient moment. The experience of being forced to leave one's homeland, of being pursued, uprooted and exiled, fractures one's existential sense of continuity. And so this, this is why the problematic of identity for the uprooted, the forcibly uprooted, is often linked to the dream and the promise of a return. The Israelis of all people should know this, but maintaining that they are the chosen people, they have forgotten it. The four million Palestinians who live in refugee camps within Palestine and outside can still know who they are and where they belong in history and geography because of this promise. The million Palestinians who reside within the borders of the State of Israel are officially known as Israeli Arabs. Until recently, the adjective Palestinian was forbidden and the use of it under certain circumstances was a criminal offence. Today, for most Israeli Jews, the very notion of a Palestinian homeland has been obliterated. Across the world, those who have sophisticated military superiority usually have considerable, if not total, control over the media. And with the help of the media, they impose denigrating stereotypes on those they are oppressing. The Taliban are primitive fanatics. The Iraqis are uncontrollable killers. Palestinians are terrorists. They were terrorists even before Al-Qaeda. In addition, they are small-minded, indolent, backward, the Palestinians themselves, such insults are nothing compared with the real injuries they suffer. But the idea that the rest of the world may judge Palestinians according to those monstrous stereotypes makes their struggle to assert their true identity harder and harder. And the fact that the outside world fails time and again to check Israel's actions such as the building of the wall on the West Bank, even when those actions have been repeatedly condemned by international law, makes that struggle at times desperate. Here it's worth reflecting on what recognition, or let's say a desirable recognition of identity involves. It implies accepting the balance between the uniquely personal and the anonymous. Those whom we call the anonymous are not the forgotten. Rather, they are the nameless who are remembered. Remembering literally means bringing members together again. For a people whose identity and land has been annexed and denied for at least three generations, the struggle to preserve and celebrate their identity takes many forms. There is the intransigence of physical resistance, intransigence in face of the gaping asymmetry of weapons and military means. There are irrepressible popular heroes who, regardless of their political errors, totally embody the 
denied identity. Arafat was the supreme example. And then there is poetry, which precisely leave nameless. Wir tragen Sterne, wir tragen Herzen, wir wollen lachen und wollen scherzen, dann wieder weinen und traurig scheinen. So muss das sein, so wird das sein, 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 so muss das sein, so wird das sein.
Love it. It looks really good.
What up, Miami? Uh, gonna shout out Anna, Sex Molecule, Yaya. Gonna close it out uh, with a few more tracks. Uh, Amtrak, my favorite. Um, and then I want to dedicate the last songs, uh, last two songs to my mom and all the girls in heaven. We're going to finish it with Girl Heaven and Madonna to take us out. Apologies to Girl Heaven, the track will not load. Thank you. Keep it unlocked, Miami. This is MCR Radio.